Agent Gemma Simmons was transported to another world. Then, she found her way home. Next Tuesday, see how she survived. If I don't find something, if I don't eat, I won't make it. This is hell. How's it going, everybody? Today, I'm going to be reviewing Season 3, Episode 5 of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., 4,722 hours. I, it took me a minute to memorize that whole thing. So in this episode, we finally get to see what was up with Simmons while she was on this planet, where she was. We get tried to get answers in this episode. They gave us some. They left others unanswered. Now, this is, this is an amazing episode. Right from the beginning, I love the choice of no music. And again, spoilers for the episode. I forgot to say that. If you haven't seen it, go watch the episode. Come back here. So as I was saying, the choice of no music right off the beginning created such tension. Uh, it was a very different Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episode, but a very good Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episode. Uh, first of all, I gotta give props to the actress playing Simmons. Can't recall her name right now, but she did a phenomenal job. Uh, hats off to her. She was, she was great. But yeah, Simmons is trapped on this, this deserted planet. She's trying to survive, but Simmons can only survive three weeks without food and only a hundred hours without water, so she's got to find and fight for her life. It, very reminiscent of the Martian right now. So then Simmons goes and she finds this water and she's swimming in it. I'm like, this is a bad idea. Something's she's either gonna like something's gonna grab her or she's gonna drown or it's not gonna actually be water. Turns out something's in the water, but she uses food. I don't know what that thing was. I don't, I don't even know. For all you know, it's poisonous and she's gonna slowly die later on. <laughs> but uh, you gotta eat what you gotta eat, right? So Sim is out there, she's watching videos on her phone. The, the, the battery on this phone is something insane. I like. I know she said Fitz pimped it out or something, but it was crazy battery life on that phone. I wish my phone had that type of capability. So eventually Simmons is again going through this thing. She falls into the trap door. She gets caged up like an animal. It's like this guy's a cannibal. He's gonna eat her or something. Turns out the guy's actually a good guy and he's telling her you gotta stay indoors because there's some monster thing comes out when the dust storm happens and she, like she's like no no you're lying and turns out he's been there since 2001 he's an astronaut and all his buddies went crazy and tried to kill him so uh, that's where we meet this person and eventually as time goes on they grow to trust each other and even develop develop some romantic feelings and I know some people will be like oh of course they're gonna be like she's she's in love with Fitz you can't have that it's like no you, think about it she's she thinks she's trapped here for one and like you're with this guy for the next couple months, you're going to be romantically involved with this person, especially if you think you're not going to get home. I mean, there was hope. And what I will say is, even though we knew the outcome of how this episode was going to end, there was still tons of tension and even, like, heartbreak. When they get that, the, they find out, they hook up the phone, she says goodbye to seeing Fitz and all the shield agents on her phone, and they go to launch the note. Because they all of a sudden, like this mystical creature person, has created the canyon, so it's way bigger now. And they try to launch that bottle into it, and it doesn't quite make it. It's just like you even you felt their heartbreak when it happened. And I think that just proves how good of a sh episode this was because you knew the outcome of this. You knew F Simmons was getting back, and you knew this other guy was not. And as I'm putting this together, you've midway through the episode you think okay so the reason she wants to come back is for this guy especially once they get romantically inclined but yeah as a, and all of a sudden we see the flare go off simon rushes for that flare to find fits she gets out she hears the gunshot and who knows did he kill himself did he shoot the astronaut wannabe who's dressed up or playing mind tricks on people we don't really know until the very weird post-credit scene <laughs> it was weird it came back from post-credit and the guy's alive and it's like okay that was anticlimactic, but it was a solid episode. The, the tension, you got to really see uh, Elizabeth Henstridge, I believe that's her name. I think I got, remembered it. Uh, her like performance, she was amazing in it, and the way she would talk to herself, and she called herself out on it, so it didn't seem like, why is she talking to herself? That's just, that's just her. One thing that kind of didn't add up, though, was how she was all distraught when she got back, and I didn't really see the effects of it. Like, she didn't seem super like i thought something bad was going to happen to the end of it or and she's going to be like tortured or something like that and that's why she's the way she is and why she was all sketchy when she got back but other than that it's a phenomenal episode 
But yeah, then once we get back to the very end of it, you see Fitz, he's going to help her now try to find this. It looks like uh, Fitz has research on a new monolith. So we're probably going to try to get to that and go back and save this guy because he is alive now. So let me know what you guys thought in the comment section below. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos. And that is it, and I will talk to you all later.